don't know what I just watched. As I've explained here um, on more than one occasion, I'm a theater fan, a little bit of a theater nerd. Um, I've seen shows more than once. I have met Broadway theater people more than once. I would be what you call a repeat attender. That being said, I heard about this documentary that was coming out about theater fans um, sometime last year. There was an image um, on one of the Broadway sites uh, that featured Jonathan Groff's face. So I said, what's that about? So it wasn't until today that I decided to watch the actual documentary. And boy, didn't see that coming. There was this really interesting and more comprehensive documentary that I watched a little while ago that was um, super interesting. It was about Harry Potter. Uh, they featured a fan of, fan of Tom Felton who would show up at his various appearances and by by all accounts she seemed extremely lovely just you know just a fan extremely dedicated as are we all at some point to um some of us to things that we love so i thought that was incredibly well done not only did they interview um the people who actually starred in the harry potter films but they kind of like it's hard to say I mean, I think that there's always this impression of fans who um, are really uh, obsessed with things, really uh, fixated on things that, you know, we're super nerdy and I mean, we are, but like, own it, <laughs> own that nerdiness, um, that there's nothing strange or for me, there's nothing strange or unusual about just being a uh, a fan of something, um, I don't want to say normalized because there's nothing unusual about being a fan of somebody. I think you hear about the more extreme cases of things like Twilight fandom was pretty extreme or um, certain things that happen in certain fandoms like theater that are tend to be extreme. Um, and so people automatically label that thing as like toxic and terrible, but it's not always bad and terrible. It's, it's really nice to have a place where, um, you have a community, you have a sense of community, you meet other people who like the same things that you do, which is super important when it comes to fandom. So I'd say the trailer itself or repeat attenders is a little misleading because it, it painted the the subjects is like such a such a happy kind of topic um I try to watch a lot of fan documentaries I just it's hard to kind of capture that feeling of fandom um you only feel that you only feel it when you're in it this kind of obsession that takes over and it takes over your brain and you can't think about anything else but this fandom and um, just kind of involving yourself in it. Uh, so there are really some well-made ones. Um, I don't think I've seen anything like this for theater fans anyway. I'm hoping, um, there will be another one that comes out <laughs> in the future because this wasn't it. Um, it's not as if I didn't understand, uh, where the subjects were coming from. So, uh, to summarize, it was mostly a documentary featuring two women, one uh, based in Germany who was obsessed with Starlight Express, and then one in San Diego who has a massive collection of cats memorabilia, like costumes and uh, playbills and scripts and tickets and God only knows whatever, whatever she has. Her entire house is like filled with cat stuff. Um, uh, as as a doc I watch a lot of documentaries and as a documentary itself it wasn't very good um it was kind of all over the place it was kind of trying to get into the psychology of fandom but it only like brushed upon it we spent more time focusing on the two women um one of which we spent way too much time on a cat's photo shoot like I really could have done without that <laughs> the extra five minutes that we spent dedicated to to that photo shoot. Um, I thought it would be more comprehensive. I thought it'd be 
talking to more fans and like what fandom means to them and kind of why they do what they do. I think focusing on two people is too, it was too specific in this case. I think, I mean, the title itself is repeat attenders. I think the idea of that is that you want to interview more than two people uh, who are repeat attenders. You only got snippets of people who said that, you know, they'd seen shows multiple times and why they had seen them. But um, I think getting a more comprehensive overview of that. Uh, one thing, uh, a documentary I'm thinking of is, is the Glee documentary, actually, uh, that focused on different kids and um, what the show had meant to them and um, how it impacted them. And then they threw in a concert as well. A lot of broad, a lot of theater was missing from this documentary, which is um, strange to say. Uh, but we did focus on Starlight Express and Cats. Um, and it did feature Patty and Emily, who are pretty well known in the YouTube world. Uh, if you don't know them, they had this channel where they, one that I really remember is one day I went to a, a woman on the word woman on the verge of a nervous breakdown and they brought this giant Patty Lapone. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Was it like a, what was, it was like a post, it wasn't a poster because it was like really long, but they brought it and they showed the process of them taking this thing to stage door and having her sign it. But uh, I felt like their kind of fandom um, and their experience should have been more should have been further explored. I think that's what I more expected, this kind of like balance, nuance kind of fandom. You have a balance of this kind of thing that's kind of, that's inhabiting your life. And then you have something that you're do, definitely doing is something that you love as a hobby. The people that we inter the people that they had interviewed, one of the guys who had been a super fan from Rent seemed a little creepy. I mean, he talked about a story about how he got blacklisted from Rent, essentially kicked out and was never able to see the show again. And then he was saying that like, well, I experienced it, you know, um, the second day of opening night. So I don't really need uh, to see it at the Nederlander again. Uh, it's like, dude, just own up to own up to what you did. Uh, it was kind of a dick thing. He had been to over like a thousand performances. I think that's something that um, Patty and Emily briefly touched on was fan entitlement, which there's a lot of in fandom. You know, you feel they, I'm just repeating what they said. You feel ostracized. So you get into a fandom and then you, it's like you further ostracize people because you are experiencing kind of this power imbalance. And now you're at the top because you're the number one fan and you're going to let everybody else know that you're the number one fan. The part that really took me out of it and that really uh, cemented its terribleness was that they interviewed this guy who had literally just been released from jail and he had been, I don't know, this doesn't sound like what the, ch well, it sounded like it was from 2011 so maybe he just got released from prison but it would, he featured, they featured this guy who sounded like he was a serial rapist. He uh, seemed to uh, really threaten Debbie Gibson online and stalked her basically to Beauty and the Beast and that's where obviously the details weren't there. He had gone to jail shortly after his multiple visits to the Beauty and the Beast stage door when she was starring in it. So having him in the documentary, giving this man a voice when he has all of these incredibly toxic and misogynistic and sexist and uh, thoughts completely blaming her for, it was just, it was just terrible. Like there was no reason for him to be in this documentary. The fact that he was in there at all and he had this platform to further talk about um, his insane rape theories, like uh, was inappropriate and shouldn't have been included at all. It's one thing to, talk about the obsession of Broadway and for it to say, you know, what obsessions can manifest into. I think that's what they were trying to say, but it didn't come out that way. They were giving a rapist a platform essentially to say what he thought. And that's inappropriate to his victim and whoever else he's victimized, because I bet you there have been other people. 
to throw that into a documentary that for all appearances from its trailer made you think that you were going into this lighthearted kind of uh, explanation of theater fandom and then you come out with this it just feel felt really icky and it felt really gross and it felt um unexpected unexpected in a really terrible way not only was it just a it wasn't a very good documentary it just wasn't very thorough like they if they wanted to explore the psychology beside behind all of that they should have introduced psychologists earlier they should have introduced you know more mental health professionals rather than just kind of throwing them in there all willy-nilly so it wasn't it wasn't very comprehensive and it really wasn't well organized um, I'm really super disappointed. It, I was expecting to go into this documentary really enjoying everything and kind of being like, oh, I relate to that because I'm a theater fan. But instead it came out, it just felt really icky and gross, um, especially that the two men that they had to feature were really inappropriate and speaking about inappropriate things like, you know, how, oh my God, I can't even repeat it. Like it's, <laughs> I no, I mean, I'll, I'll repeat it because I don't want you to watch it. So he was just talking about how he was in line and rent and there were really attractive girls who were there. He said girls and not women. So it, it, oh my God, so gross. He was saying that like, you know, they were sharing a sleeping bag or whatever and things happened. And it's like, why are we, it's not, you know, it's not like a lighthearted kind of idea to talk about these things you know I'm sure it's something that happened it I but it's not what I expected I don't know this documentary said it was like six years in the making and they didn't really really follow through on that either because they only featured one person that we went to six that we went back to six years later and was like this is what her life is like now but we didn't follow up on anybody else six years later so it didn't make sense to like <laughs> even even say that it's a been in the process for six years it feels like they didn't really do anything in that six years to I don't know follow through with their whatever they were aiming to do you know the whole time I kept just trying to think of like what would I do if I had done a documentary on Broadway fans you know if it was a six-year kind of event or a six-year kind of film like you know, I would have gone to Broadway Con or I would have talked to the online fans. There's such an, there's so many ways that you could have done this that would have made it more comprehensive than focusing on like two people and two specific fandoms. It didn't really, it wasn't comprehensive. It didn't really like, the show was, the movie is called Repeat Attender. So I'm, I think the entire time I was just expecting more people to come in and share their story. That's all I want to hear in documentaries are people coming to share their stories. Um, you know, I'd love to do a project like that. I like, I love documentaries. I would love to feature Patty and Emily. I would love to feature, um, people on YouTube who are making these really fantastic, really comprehensive documentaries about Broadway, about shows. I haven't seen a lot concerning fans. I would really love to do a feature just talking to fans, talking about their shows, talking about their fandoms, um, what they love about the theater. Are they pursuing theater? Are they fans who go to see people multiple stage doors and like, here are their photos with them. Like, that's fun. Like, that should be, that should be something. I would love to make that a thing. I'm going to manifest that. I'm going to put that out there. If anybody wants to talk to me about this, it's like contact info somewhere in here. Like talk to me about this because um, those are the things that I'm interested in. I know that other people are interested in um, hearing other people's stories. I think other people's stories are so important and that we need to be all be listened to and hear our stories, but I just would not rather include a rapist in it or anybody implying that they had um, sexual experiences in the line to go see Rent uh, during its heyday. So yeah, I really wish I could recommend something like this, you know, next to an Every Little Step or one of the Golden Age of Broadway document. But no, I would never, I would never. I had such high hopes for this and I'm extremely disappointed that it exists and uh, if I were them, I would just completely re-edit the whole thing and uh, put more people in it. Because it, it seems like they were on a good track. They had a lot of people in it that could 
make commentary about the fans that they see um, at the theater, but it was just, it was just not good. It was just not good. Do not see this documentary. Like, I'm trying to spare you. Don't go see it. There should be a warning in advance that you're probably not gonna like what you hear, so uh, just take that as a word of caution. And um, I'll see you guys uh, hopefully for a better, better subject, better topic of conversation.